Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. This is Marilyn Shannon, and we are here at the Breaking Free Show, and I'm delighted, and I appreciate it. I know that your time is very special, and I honor you for being here today and joining us each and every week, or if this is your first time, thank you for coming. If this is your millionth time, thank you for being here. We always delight ourselves in bringing the most interesting guests, subject matters, maybe some things we don't always think about or that we do, but we don't realize how far to take them or what to do with it, a philosophy, an idea, a new invention, something that might inspire us, spark us to greater heights. And that's what we're here for. And that's what freedom is all about. So before we get started with our guest today, I want to say hi to Amnon. Hello, Mary. Good morning, Amnon. How are you? Good morning. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. I'm not as our, uh, oh, what, what is it? Uh, I, I'm just your My technician. Bo- he, he, oh. And more than that, let me tell you, everything good? Everything is fine. Yeah, good. You had a good weekend? It was a good weekend. Good. A lot of work. A lot of work. Doing good, what? Just working on. Just around your, yeah. your yeah. but anything change in our, like, technology with our shows or anything mm. that we should all be aware of? No. Nothing because I'm not really does keep up with trends and things that are happening to make our shows really and truly the most professional online broadcast you can find. So I appreciate that. And just want to remind you all that anytime during the show, here is an open invitation for you to join us anytime you want to comment, question, anything. You can call in at 919-518-9773. Or you can come in at Skype, and that's computers, that's plural, then the number two, K voice, and you will come in on Skype voice. And then, if you notice, we also have a live chat going on during the show as well, and you can join us there. Just put your name, nickname, whatever you like under our video, and you can comment, ask questions, just share information right there. If you are watching us on Facebook, I don't want to forget you. You are more than welcome to come over to Nissan communications.com and watch the show from there. You'll be watching live, but you also can comment and we will see your comments there. So please feel free to partake in our show today because it's really going to be interesting. And it's something that I think we don't give enough credit to. And in order to go on, I'm going to ask my guest, Kate Nasser, the people skills coach to come on and tell us a little bit about herself and we'll get on with our show. Hi, Kate. Hey, how are you today, girl? Um, good. How are you? I'm very well, thanks. Good. Thank you for joining us today. I'm happy to. You and I always have great conversations. We do. So I think everybody, you know, go get a piece of paper and a pencil because there's no telling what's going to come out of these two mouths. <laughs> <laughs> the sky is the limit. Because <laughs> you're going to see that Kate and I will have aha moments as we're talking. Right? That's true. That will be oh, ahas. So who are you, Kate? I'm Kate Nasser. I'm known as the People's Skills Coach, and I spend my all my work life and even my personal life, but especially my work life, on positive people skills for success in business and in life. That's who I am. And you have written a new book. Yes, I'm very excited about this book. Leading morale, which is, you had to have been inspired to have come up with a title like that, leading morale, because initially I had a hard time understanding what that meant. But as I got into it, now I have a better idea of what leading morale means. So tell everybody, what does leading morale mean? So most of the time, most people think of boosting morale or uh, reigniting morale. In other words, sort of moments, you know, where you have some special event for your employees. But morale is not an event. Uh, It's not a pep rally. Leading morale means that everything you say and do as a leader affects how people experience their work experience working with you. In other words, the whole picture of morale, you have to lead it with your every word and every breath and every step. So it would be certainly not the same conversation, 
but leading morale would be a similar thing as leading respect or leading compassion? Actually, the word that you will see a lot in my book, in fact, I have it at the beginning and then at the end and throughout, the word is dignity. And I don't know if you want me to go through it now, but I had an aha moment at the end of writing the book. This was a very interesting phenomenon. I I kept using the word respect and, and that's extremely important. But I kept thinking, and then there's more, but it's not quite the word and trust and all of these things, right? And then I had written the whole manuscript for the book and was taking a little break before I went back, you know, to really get into the editing of it. And I'm always reading books. I'm always reading blogs, following the news, you know, keeping up with all the thought leaders. And I came across a book called dignity at work dignity so i bought the book immediately devoured it on a weekend and realized that what i had been writing about for a year in this in this manuscript was dignity morale is all about dignity and there was just another study just i read about it what friday it's a gallup Whole in the workplace that again, why do people leave? They leave their boss, they leave their leader, they leave their manager when they don't like it. But what they are leaving is this assault mm-hmm. on their dignity. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I just had a, a, con- a thought because you know, a lot of people make it about the money, it's not about the money all the time. It's not a, all no, it's not. It is about how people feel. Yes. You know, they will stay for less if they are respected, valued, if they, if they feel dignity, if their morale is up. So I think this is not think. I know that this is a really interesting topic. I just want to hold up Kate's book a second. Here it is. And we're going to talk about we're going to be talking a lot about this book and the information in it. So here you go. And it's on Amazon. And we'll get into that too. There you go. Okay. There you go. On Amazon. Okay. So, and the topic of morale is not just limited to huge teams. Because, oh, yeah. right? Because in, oh, the, yeah. in the entrepreneurial world, whether people work for you or not, and they work with you, morale is at the core, dignity is at the core of all the connections that you could have with even outsourcing. So keep that yeah, in mind. With outsourcing, I mean, there's a slight difference uh, in that when you're an outside provider, for example, I'm an outside provider, right? I go into major corporations. I do training on teamwork, customer service, leadership, and all of that. And because they are my customers, I accommodate them more than I would accommodate my boss if I had a if I were working full time for one company. And how do you do that? Well, because in a customer relationship, uh, when I'm going in, my I know that I don't know everything that's going on in that organization. Just the same way that somebody's working at, uh, I don't know, like a Staples or a Best Buy or whatever. Someone comes rushing in, they're under pressure, they need something. And maybe they're not as courteous and you don't necessarily stop and have a discussion about dignity. You as a seller or as a provider overlook some of those, you know, not so nice behaviors and try to find out what the customer really needs and and provide it. But when you are a leader in an organization and you have people working, you know, they are your employees and they're there every single day. That's a, that's a different dynamic. And you have to understand that daily dignity is essential to good morale. And it's not just about, oh, let's have a free pizza day or um, bring your pet to work day. And there are even stories I have in the book, real life stories from interviews I did. This one woman said, oh, we had bring your pet to work day. We had free food. We even had kegs of beer. I don't know too many companies that do that, Mm -hmm. but they did. 
and their employer took them to these exotic island vacations. But when they got there, the leaders used to shoot these Nerf guns or something at the employees. In other words, they thought that just because they were giving them free things that they could treat these employees any way they wanted. And then, and then these leaders were upset and insulted when nobody wanted to have dinner with them on the vacation. And, and you're like, what? people care more about dignity than they do about free pizza mm-hmm. or a vacation. Right. And it's, and it's sustainable. It's got longevity. It's not where you come in. That, it's, like it's, if you go into a business the, the day after they've had their Christmas party, everybody's going to be in a great right. mood, right? Right. But, but if you go in the day, you know, weeks after, months after the Christmas party and there's been nothing, mm-hmm. there's going to be a difference, isn't there? Well, and not only is there not nothing in terms of events, but what goes on on a daily basis is what keeps dinging away at people's sense of dignity and self-esteem and therefore morale. Exactly. So I, I know I can go, I, like I go into Trader Joe's, everybody, you know, for the most part, people seem happy. They seem, you know, they seem cooperative. They want to help. There's something going on. You betcha. Right. So what, what's happening in those places? Um, I will tell you that places like Trader Joe's, uh, certainly Nordstrom's years ago wrote that book about it. And it's about if you want your your employees to have this incredible sense of morale and tied to your business so that they're almost your own brand ambassadors of sorts, then you have to allow them. Certainly, they have to understand the, the mission and the vision of the organization, which Mm -hmm. most leaders do. But then the leaders have to treat the employees the way they want the employees to treat the customers. There has to be a sense of of respect and honor and appreciation and recognition, all of these things that some leaders think are sort of fluffy and maybe it even weakens people if you treat them too nicely, which is all hogwash, by the way. Um, and if, when you put all of that in place and all the leaders and all the managers and all the supervisors have to be trained so that their daily interaction is seamlessly supportive of employee dignity. And that's what you see going on at Trader Joe's, at Nordstrom's. There are other companies too. Those are the two that, you know, would come to mind here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's, it, and it also reminds me of times when I've been in a really like doesn't have to be an expensive restaurant. Oh, I can no. just go to a really nice, you know, whatever kind of restaurant and the waiter, whatever staff is waiting on me. I am the customer and they right. are ex- there. They are treating me as they are being treated. Right. And you can and tell. They, and you can tell that they I mean, it's possible to have a wonderful employee experience program where you're doing all those things as leaders and it's possible to have an employee who just does not want to serve others Mm -hmm. and does not even want to be a part of this very positive experience it doesn't happen very often because what companies are learning is that they need to put this kind of program into their hiring so as they interview people they are assessing whether or not these people are good at service, are they good at teamwork? Because morale, leading morale is not just for organizations that are in the service industry. You need great morale in every industry and in every company. But we tend to think about it initially for service-oriented businesses because that's what the customers see front and center. Exactly. And, you know, it's hard, it's difficult, challenging for companies, big or small, to find the right employees to hire, to fit certain jobs, certain criteria. So when you find people and you, or you're tra- you you're just training, it takes a lot of money to train people. So the most, the, I mean, to keep the dignity up and the morale up so you don't have to go through that heartache and have people leaving is huge. And it's, it's interesting because, um, 
it doesn't take millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. um, it takes focused training at the leadership, managerial, supervisory levels where they are first involved in understanding you know, you can't have a training program that 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 talks at leaders, that talks at managers. You know, this right. is what you need to do, because for them to buy into it, they need to be able to search into their own beliefs and realize where their own subconscious beliefs are actually blocking their leading morale. Mm -hmm. I just wrote a blog post uh, just recently, and. and was all about are your man you know sometimes you have the leaders are very into the higher level leaders yes definitely you know we're we're enlightened we want a high morale workplace and then they they turn to their managers and they say you know go ahead do it set up a an empowerment high morale program and make sure there are metrics so that we know if we're doing well right and it was about three years ago I had a big company very large company asked me to come in and that's what the leader said. So they wanted me to start with the metrics. And I said, first, we have to figure out what your managers believe. We have to understand what they believe. And surprise, surprise, it turns out that half of the managers in that organization believed at this, that an employee needs to earn the right to be uh, have high morale and earn the right to be empowered hmm. and earn the right to participate and to suggest, you know, ideas. Well, hmm. What did you hire these people for? And people think, well, you know, lower level workers don't have the capacity. That's, that's baloney. You can't, you hire people in and basically say to them, you have to follow the rules for six months before you earn the right to be empowered or to have a voice. What? And so when I went back to the leaders and I said, okay, before we do any metrics of, of how you're going to succeed at this, first we have to reshape the beliefs here because they're not going to do it. Every single day they're going to interact with these employees probably, what, five, six times a day, depending on the roles and the transactions and things like that <laughs> you got to be the change i mean you got to believe you gotta, it yeah you got to believe gotta it. Be the change. absolutely i mean it can't I mean, it all has to work together right i mean so you know i'm gonna say chris who's my um uh, um manager and different things and has been working with me for i don't know how many years and i know she's listening and i don't know what i would how I could do what I do without her. And there's just she and I, of course. I mean, I'm not, of course, runs the show. But without Chris's help, I couldn't. And I, I, I think it's really important that she knows how much I appreciate her. Because we're just two people. And, and so I know that her morale is lifted or better when she knows that I appreciate her. Absolutely. And true. it's just the two of us. So in any organization where, you know, you have the ability and the, the, I mean, to do this. And so I think I'd love to talk to you about, let's say, let's start with some small business, right? Like a two person, yeah. three person, five person organization. Uh, how, how do you suggest people, you know, employees, leaders bring in the mor lift morale. And then maybe I also want to ask you whether it's, and here's two questions. How in a small business does the leader, a leader, you know, bring in morale, lift it up and be thinking about what happens when they don't, what is, what's up to the employee? How does the employee, because sometimes it isn't coming from the leader. It's coming by osmosis from the employees that, find a way to get as a leader because look leadership does not just happen because you have a title leadership happens because you say so you say you're a leader i'm a leader whether i have a title or not and it is not a control freak thing it is truly leadership and you can lead from anywhere so it is all of our responsibility 
at wherever we are, whether it's at the top of the bus or the bottom of the bus, wherever we are, to be accountable and responsible for lifting morale wherever we go. So those are two questions. How do leaders do it in small businesses and how do employees do it? And you can answer whichever one you want first. Okay. Well, certainly um, the good news is that whether it's a large business or a very small business, midsize, it really doesn't matter. The way to start uh, making sure that, you know, lifting morale, leading morale, as I call it, because if you have to lift it, it means that it's already not so great. It's heavy. It's heavy. Right. So in terms of leading morale, the place to start, believe it or not, as mundane as it may sound, is by having everybody define what is morale. There are a huge number of assumptions, some true, some not so true, about morale. Some people think morale is constant happiness. Well, this is not true. There are going to, in fact, morale is what keeps you going even when times get tough. So it isn't constant happiness. So step one for everybody, and it could be just, for example, in your case, it's you and Chris. It could be a company that has five people, 500, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000. It doesn't matter. How do people define morale? Because if they define it differently, no matter what the leader does, the leader's not going to hit the mark because the other person or persons is defining it differently. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. In terms of the second question, and we'll get back to more of the how-tos of leading morale in a minute, but you posed a very interesting question. What responsibility do employees have for leading their own morale? And the, of course, People have to be responsible for what I call people are responsible for their daily mindset. But in most organizations, and it may be different when it's just when it is two people like you and Chris, for example, but certainly when there are more than two people, the problem when leaders say, employees, you are responsible for your own morale. Something. You know, you should be speaking up. But the big question is, what happens when they speak up? Are they ignored? Are they uh, sort of put a a mark on that person? Uh, That person's a troublemaker. Uh, Do you take revenge, even passive aggressively, against employees who speak up? So although as leaders, we like to think, well, you know, employees have responsibility for this too. The bottom line is that there are conditions in most companies that have somewhat bad morale that stopped or inhibited those employees from speaking up. Hmm. So in certain cases, you have a choice on whether you stay or go. Right. But that does exactly. So what happens is that, you know, you don't like things. uh, You feel your dignity is being assaulted. You're demoralized by the manager's behavior toward you, by their comments, by the fact that it's all about them, whatever the, you know, all these conditions are. And the leader shows no sign of wanting to learn, wanting to have feedback, growing and changing and evolving. So you generally start your own job search and then people start to leave there are companies that are revolving doors or departments that are revolving doors and so many times people think well it just doesn't pay enough well there are studies to show that certainly people have to make enough money to live on even to start saving for their future and so forth money is important to a point but there are people getting paid good salaries who leave And companies like to think that they're leaving for a higher salary or better benefits, like more vacation time. They, the unenlightened companies do not think that these people are leaving because their dignity is being indirectly and directly assaulted. That's the problem. 
and I guess a, a lot of companies don't even realize that that's even an issue. So and yet all the all the all the studies keep saying it. People right. leave their boss. People leave the leader. They leave the manager. And we, again, we just had one of those the other day. Another Gallup, you know, poll, and it, and they we keep doing the studies, and the studies keep saying the same thing. Right. And yet here we are because. Uh, helping to raise or lead uh, morale and bring in dignity wherever you are. These are, and, th and this is perfect with, with Kate being a people skills coach, because these are, these are little skills. These are not always, these are not huge things. These are like a smile. They're a glance. They're a handshake. They're a thank you. They're opening up the door for somebody. It's noticing somebody. These are, these are common skills that go a long way. Kate? These are definitely skills. It's in what you say. It's in how you say it. It's in, uh, it's about listening and, and, and honoring other people's talents. In the book, there's a whole chapter on honoring individual talents. And I list 25 talents because a lot of managers say, well, what, what are you talking about talent? We, we have skills. And I say skills are things that anybody can learn. And, and yes, you certainly recognize their skill level. And sometimes that's what you pay them for, you know, increased training, increased skills, and you pay them more. But a talent is something inside of a person, something that they naturally do well. And when you honor that when you call it out and you and you say hey pat you are great at collaboration make sure that you bring that to the table on this project because boy do we need your talent mm -hmm. absolutely no, that it, yeah seems so obvious doesn't it more, yeah that's it that increases morale and then people say to me but wait a minute you're not supposed to give individual praise because that turns people into divas. It makes people non-team players. There is no I in team. Uh huh. More hogwash. First of all, the millennials and the generation now that is Gen, uh, gen what do you call them? Gen Z, I think it is, right? <laughs> but there's Gen Y, those were the millennials. Uh, and I think they I'm too old, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the ones that are in college now, right, mm -hmm. graduating from college, like the ones down in Parkland and, uh, you know, graduating high school, going to college and so forth. So you have all of these and they grew up in this, what I call collaborative spirit. Everybody got a trophy for participating. Whoops. Okay, hopefully she's coming back at just the right moment. I know she will. She froze. Okay, so and uh, many leave. Kate, 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 you froze right there. So go back a little bit. Uh, they're graduating. Tell us a little bit more about what you just said because you froze. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so what I'm saying is that the younger generations and the millennials, first of all, make up the, the biggest part of the workforce now, right? And what we have to remember is that they don't believe that this, there is no I in team. They believe that individual talents combined make the best results. So you have to make sure that you are saying that's a great talent you have. That's a great talent you have. This is this is marvelous what you do here. Bring it all together. That's the new model for igniting teams. Not the traditional model that says there is no I in team. Sacrifice, buckle down. They, they don't they don't what are you talking about? They don't live this, they don't think it and you are not going to lead them that way. It's not going to happen. So you're so, saying then it's okay to be a strong eye without, um, a, so it's like a healthy eye, without yes. the ego getting in the way in order to create a powerful team. That if everybody 
on the team thought of themselves as a healthy eye, the team would prosper. Yes, a healthy eye that wants to contribute. Right. And, and what I'm trying to share with leaders now in this book and the workshops that I'm starting to do is that we really, those of us who are in the older generation, we're not millennials, we have to, we have to evolve. We have to understand that the, it is very possible to have healthy eyes that join together and they each contribute and then they learn from each other and they listen. And if you happen to find an egomaniac roaming mm -hmm. around your team, you can always address that because the definition of a team is people that change and evolve together mm -hmm. to meet the end result. Most people think a team is a group of people working towards a common goal. I tell people you're missing the most important part. A healthy team is one that changes and evolves together. So if, if each person isn't changing and growing, it's not going to be a team. And that means that each person has to be a healthy eye and that we should honor those talents. Can you imagine how wonderful it would feel to have a leader recognize your natural talents and calling all those talents to the table? For, to meet this mission. I mean, I get excited just thinking about it. Well, we, and it means to me that all, all the healthy eyes are simply leaders because a leader is going to be, you know, is going to stand out. But they're the leader. They're going to stand out somehow. They don't have to stand out because they, you know, look at me. They're, they are the experiment. They are the example. They go first. And if they, it, right? they, they go first, what I'm saying is that each person on the team, whether they aspire to have the title of leader someday, but if each person on the team contributes the full uh, gamut of what they have inside of them and, and respects the person's, you know, the, this person's talent over here instead of being jealous mm. of them then the team becomes this high performing agile team that every company spends millions of dollars trying to create. Well, there is a difference between being the leader and a leader. Yes. And just the fact that the leader might be the leader and right, have and be and and my definition of a leader is a leader is leading leaders. You're not officially in my book a leader if you are not making it your business to create and have leaders all around you doesn't mean exactly. right that is my definition and and picture leadership let's say you're doing some kind of innovation project or you're just doing an operations improvement project or a customer service improvement effort whatever it is and everybody on that team whether they are just hired and starting at the bottom of the pay scale or they've risen up for five years or whatever, everybody at any moment could be leading pieces of that purely by the talent that they have at that moment. Some people are very good at innovative mm -hmm. and innovating. They, they think it, they, they live it, they breathe it. So sometimes they, they leave at the beginning mm -hmm. of the project. Some people are incredibly good at speaking the truth honestly but they never insult anybody so when there's a bit of group think that starts to come about that person can say wait a minute we are we're missing a very important point and bam here it is but because of their natural way of saying it they don't insult anybody they don't create scars that you have to remove for three years after that <laughs> so each person in an organization, again, regardless of skill level, salary level, or whatever, each person dynamically contributes their talent when leaders start to highlight those talents in public for the whole team to see. Mm -hmm. And that gives each person an opportunity to lead in a certain segment, in a certain part of the team. Not everybody's going to do like Kate said, not everybody's going to do it the same way. And I think 
The other very important factor here is we are generational working together in an organization or in a some kind of arena unit of some sort. We are different generations. We're gender. We're cultural. We're all kinds of things. Yep. And when you do the, the, you know, there's a lot of things you don't have to know about what I do. You may not know what Kate does. You may not know what, you know, your uh, sweet mate does down the hall. You may not know what certain people do, but what you do know is how to be nice. What you do know is how to ask a question, listen to the answer and be curious about what people are doing and go ahead, go ahead. Go. You said the word. I have to, I have to jump in. I Go can't ahead. <laughs> Curious. Morale at the front end and, and underneath it all, you know, if, like if you picture it in levels, dignity is that rock solid base. Because if people feel their dignity is being assaulted, whether they stay there and reassert their dignity or whether they leave and go work someplace else, nothing happens if people feel that their dignity is being assaulted. But once you put that in place and you do your best every single day to respect mm -hmm. the dignity of your people, then what you want to create is this curiosity about everybody. And I don't mean petty curiosity about what's going on in somebody's personal life. Mm -hmm. I mean, curious about how people learned, uh, developed their natural talent, curious about what they want to do. When you create this morale, people say, but Kate, the reason we don't focus on morale ostensibly is because we can't, it's not something we can touch. We can measure a skill. We can give people training, but how do we foster and what I call lead morale? And it's in your everyday interactions. You want to make sure that you make it as safe to innovate as you do to complain. You know, people will innovate. They'll be curious more if you encourage them to do it. And if you don't make fun of them when their innovation effort, uh, you know, comes up a dud. So it's about a very positive mindset for leading rather than a negative. Let's catch them. Let's blame them. Let's measure them. Let's tell them what they did wrong. And I'm not saying that all organizations are totally negative, but if you look closely it has a negative feel to it. They're not all the way over on the positive side. And partly it's because leaders that came through earlier generations, unfortunately were taught and believed that if you're too nice, you make people weak. Hmm. And they think about themselves that if they, if they honor emotion, if they accept emotion in the workplace, if they tap into it, if they're that they will be too nice. My book has some illustrations in it. I found a wonderful illustrator. I was so lucky. And they were able to illustrate some of the more difficult concepts. And I said to them, you know, it's like some leaders are afraid that if they're too nice, uh, they'll fall into a, a, a big bucket. And they won't be able to get out. Well, they don't. Some 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 people don't know how to handle, get uncomfortable with certain things. So listen, before we go on, because it's we're having a good conversation and I'd love for everybody to join us. So please feel free. Once again, 919-518-9773. You can call in. You can come in on our, on our chat room. Just put your name next to the video and you can come there and live chat with us ask questions. You can also come in on Skype, computers, that's plural 2K voice. And if you're on Facebook, please join us at nissancommunications.com. That's where you'll be watching the show live and be able to chat if you want, because we're not seeing the chat where we are from Facebook. Here's a really good question from uh, the chat, and this is from Chris. For someone searching for a job, what question or questions would they ask to determine whether or not the company um, looks at morale and dignity. What would you ask in the interview? That's a great question. If you were interviewing, uh, it depends on who you're interviewing with. 
if you get to have multiple interviews, which sometimes you do, you know, your first interview with the HR hiring manager, and if you get past them, you get to talk to the manager or the leader you'd be working for, and even some of the people that you would be working with. But at the first level, what I would ask them is, how do you define morale here, and how is mor- how how is morale? Simple. 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 Because because if they if you if what you see is a blank stare, um, if they if they hesitate, if the if the person you're asking the question of doesn't have a an answer, I mean, if they're shocked that you answer as you ask that question. It doesn't mean that they have bad morale, but it does tell you that it is not a morale driven culture. It's they don't talk about it. They don't talk about it, which is the the more common uh, occurrence that in other words, it, it isn't like at Trader Joe's or at Nordstrom's, they would be able to give you that answer. And whether they were defining morale or company spirit, I mean, it's all the same zone. You know, mm-hmm. right, right, right. If all, if all you say is how's morale here, they'll say, oh, it's good. But if you say to them, how how do you all define morale? That's the question that. That it's either they're either going to have an answer right away or they're going to give you one of those looks. Exactly. Great question. Yeah, it's a good question. So here's another one. So. What are what are you noticing with companies today? Are you seeing a trend towards receptability that are people and I might, you know, are our companies being receptive to this notion of morale? Because it doesn't. Co- and here's the other thing, which I think is important to bring up. It doesn't cost anything. It's not it like making a big party or giving everybody, you know, Friday afternoon off during the summer. It doesn't cost anything to compliment somebody and uh, do one, of, you know, something. So are you seeing receptability? Are you seeing companies, you know, receptive to the idea or what? I see them. Of course, it depends on the company. Um, the, uh, the very, like, startups and that sort of thing, um, they... I think they feel it in the beginning because most startups have that spirit of birthing a company of mm-hmm. sorts. But for uh, but for most of the companies that we think about, I'm not sure they're really focusing yet on morale. What they are focusing in on is, this is the question they constantly ask, how do we attract and retain millennials? And beneath, behind that question is their awareness that millennials expect what they call quality of life at work. You know, many of us in the older generations, we, we went to work and then we thought, oh, what am I doing this weekend for fun? Or what am I going to do tonight to enjoy myself? Millennials expect a, 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 a upbeat feeling at work, and that is morale. So I think that companies don't realize that they're specifically talking about morale, which is why I wanted to publish this book. Mm-hmm. You know, I published it back in March or a few months ago. But they, that is what they're asking. They're asking, how do we really attract millennials and keep them and get them, you know, get them to contribute their fullest. And the answer is lead morale. <laughs> it's funny. Cause I know that, you know, when you hear about what, what some organizations are doing, who doesn't want to go work for them? You know, yeah. I mean, and so I mean, I I'm assuming and correct me if I'm wrong, that technology companies that deal in technology, you know, advertising, marketing agencies, they tend to do more around morale. Am I wrong? Um, I, I, I would have to say that I don't a hundred percent agree. Okay. Um, they, for example, you say advertising agencies, marketing agencies. Early in the discussion today, I mentioned 
uh, that woman who was willing to tell me her story and I was doing these interviews for the book and the one that said that they used to give us free beer and and all of this and they took us on exotic vacations but then they would treat us badly it was an advertising agency so and what happens is that we sometimes think of morale so I understand where you're where you'd think that we sometimes think of morale as extroverted, wow, wow things. And that kind of, in our mind, fits with, you know, companies like advertising agencies okay. and such. But the people working in the advertising agency, even though they have the right to yell out a wild idea, perhaps, for the, the new uh, soda that they're going to be advertising, doesn't mean that they're being treated badly. Right. You can't tell a book by its cover. So you have to ask the right questions because... What you're saying is absolutely, I remember when I was traveling um, in the advertising world, public relations world, and I would go to an agency and they would be playing games. They right. had funky furniture, even right. back years ago. Oh, yes, they right? did. It does not mean that their employees were any more than a number. Correct. So you, they were yeah. playing games because just like if you went into a scientific laboratory, you would see them, you know, with microscopes and test tubes and, you know, some kind of big spectrometers or whatever. Um, those games are the work tools in an advertising agency. It has really nothing to do specifically with uh, leading morale of the employees. It was to generate the creativity to, to get the job done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you it know, yeah. I recently uh, spoke at a meeting um, for eye, con eye Contact, which is an email marketing company, and they're they're all over, but they're local, and local to uh, the Raleigh Morrisville area. And they, I am using them, but I went as as my email marketing source. But I went to their company meeting, and the culture of the, what I saw was a lovely thing. And I have to say it, I saw it and I was shocked in some ways how complimentary they were of people, how, you know, the managers of different departments, you know, called on people to share what they had discovered, what they were doing. And I was, I should not have had my mouth open. I should, and you know what I mean? I should not have been like, like I was shocked at all the nice words that were coming out of people's mouths. I shouldn't be shocked at that. And that's, and that's the question. Why are we shocked when we see it? I don't know. It's because it, it's a, it's it's different. And I will say that I, like I said earlier, I you know Chris is my only employee per se, and she's not an employee. She's a friend too. But I would say, in the scheme of things, she is my only employee. But if it wasn't for the ex, you like we have an extended family. You know, we all have or hopefully have some extended family outside of our immediate family that we can, whether it's friends, whether it's whoever it is that we consider to be our extended family. I believe I have an extended team of people that I work with, contractors, subcontract, whatever it is, that if it wasn't for us understanding subconsciously what morale and dignity would mean, I wouldn't get half the things done and the gifts that I get as a solo entrepreneur as I get. And if it wasn't for what I didn't know to identify as dignity and morale before, you know, talking to Kate, that's what it is. We yes. have that, we, an exchange of that. I, I think uh, the reason that we're, one of the reasons we're shocked at it when we see it, like you said, you shouldn't have been surprised, right? No. And, and I think one of the reasons we're, we're surprised in addition to the fact that it, it doesn't happen everywhere. But I think that we're surprised almost subconsciously because we learn somewhere, I don't know, somewhere along the way, people have confused being complimentary, being respectful with being less than truthful. That in other words, <laughs> If you are complimenting your employees and you are highlighting their talents and you're treating them well, that you're not really being honest with them. And, and you could get so much more out of people if you were being brutally honest. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. 
you can be respectful, you can honor their dignity, you can be civil, courteous, and still speak the truth. And in fact, mm -hmm. one of the quotes that I use in, I have two Twitter chats now, one on the Sunday morning, one that I've been running for years, that's the people skills chat, but I'm running a lead morale chat now on Thursday nights on Twitter. And my message is at the beginning of every chat, civility does not weaken your message. It helps others to hear it. Mm -hmm. So we can be nice to people and still speak the truth. If an employee is, you know, basically not meeting the goals, they're not, you know, they're falling behind or whatever, there's absolutely no reason why you can't say to them, here's where you're at. Here's where we really need you to be to fit into the whole team, you know, results. That's dignified, it's respectful, it's civil, and it's honest. This is not no. difficult. No, and it's, I and I do want to exp I do want to say that no matter what, you know, be the change and do the right thing, even when you are not labeled the manager. If you see a cohort or you see a, you know, somebody who's doing something, somebody on your team, it is such a great thing to to oh, let yeah. them know you've noticed. Absolutely. I mean, in fact, when we say the leader needs to lead morale, what we're trying to make sure that they realize is that they are showing everybody else how to do it with each other. Uh, and we have a caller, right? Hello. Hi, Marilyn. Hi, Kate. It's Chris. Hey, Chris. Hi. Hey. I wanted to um, just make a, a, a quick comment. Um, and first of all, Marilyn, thank you so much for all the wonderful things you said. Um, it truly really is an honor to work with you. Um, and having said that, I think one of the things that resonates with me the most is um, I didn't just graduate and start working with Marilyn. I graduated and I had a couple jobs. And I think when I started to work for Marilyn, I had never worked for anyone like you, Marilyn, before. <laughs> okay. um, is that a compliment? And is that a compliment? <laughs> it is, yes. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but I think I so appreciate the respect and the dignity that I that I have from working with you. And um, I never had that before um, I started working with you. And I think I just appreciate it so very much because it's something I have not encountered in my past so far. Mm. So I think that's important. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people um, enjoy it. And when you do, you really don't want to leave, you know, because it's so wonderful. Thanks, Chris. I appreciate I mean, that. Just really, th that's, I'm so glad you took time to share that with leaders, with, with uh, Marilyn, because, you know, employees need to give feedback to their leaders, too, about the things that they, leaders are doing well and, you know, where they're messing up, as long as the leaders don't take revenge on them. But right. the most telling thing that Chris just said, she had, what, two jobs before she worked for you, and nobody ever treated her with dignity and respect? I mean, not, to, not to the level of working with Marilyn. And hmm. again, you know, there are, there, are, there are these myths that leaders have. I just want to sort of make sure everybody understands. We're not saying that that leaders have to walk around only saying the sweet, see nice things. That is mm. not, that's not what we're saying. And you no. don't have to be an extrovert to lead morale. That's another myth. People think, well, I can't lead morale. I'm not an extrovert. You know, I'm more, more introverted. Extrovert, leading morale is not about, you know, having a, being a cheerleader with a pom-pom. It's about treating people with dignity and respect. And I know plenty of introverts who do that extraordinarily well. Introverts' challenge generally is just that they have to increase their communication uh, frequency to let other people know what they're thinking and sooner. And that that is a challenge, and that's another. I'd love to come back sometime. Yeah, we'll have to do, uh, yeah. Extroverts. Yeah, 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 yeah. You but see, I, I, I just want to say um, something about this conversation with Chris now because it's not something like, like uh, Kate just said, it's not something that I'm always um, conscious of, and it's and it's sad to think that I am doing something more than other people because I don't believe I'm doing 
all that much. We stay very busy. So this is, listen to me. We stay very busy. I don't always say to Chris, you, you know, it could be an emoji. It's, you know, it ain't big. You know, it might be <laughs> yeah. where her daughter's does something really great and we go out to lunch and celebrate. It's not right. always directed at her. And it's not something that I even think about all the time. Right. But it's so for all of you out there, it, it's very important to realize that it's not it's I'm sad to think that a lot of people aren't doing it. But at the same time, it ain't hard. Mm-hmm. It's easy. It, it is. And what and, and in this book, what I've done, because there are people who have different levels of intuition. What I've done, I've put into this book. I mean, there are checklists. There are how to's. You know, basically, this is a how to guide to do everything that we've talked about today and more. So, Kate, we're not almost, 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 almost going to be out of time. So why don't you tell everybody just a little bit more of and hold on, Chris, where they can find you, Mm -hmm. what they'll find and why they should even look for you. (laughs) Sure. Well, basically, I have a website, um, katenasser.com. And there's video footage out there. I have a YouTube channel that has even more videos. I, I bring in certain of those to the website, you know, to, to feature those uh, clips. Uh, I have a very active blog. I blog at least once or twice a week. And basically, everything that I do is all focused on positive human interaction for success in business. And then I have people who come back to me and say, you know, we could use this in our everyday life. And I say, thank you, because that that is what I ultimately want. And so, you know, it's this book that I've published uh, just a couple of months ago. It's the chats that we do on Twitter. It's my workshops, my keynotes, my individual coachings. The bottom line is, If you really want to improve your human interaction, as Marilyn just said, it ain't hard. (laughs) And I can teach you the skills to do it. Whether you are highly intuitive and you just want to know how to sort of reel in your antenna, or whether you don't have very much intuition and you need the exact list of what to say and not to say, that's in that book as well. So I hope that you find it as valuable as so many people have, it's got great reviews on Amazon. So I'm happy. Good. I, I, and I would say that some of the ta- some things you just, you, you instinctively know, but you don't know, you know, so sometimes exactly. it's really good to be, to have these things validated. I think so. I think so. I mean, I, it's interesting because I just had a very recent experience where somebody validated without knowing it, they don't even really know me. Uh, very well, but but their integrity and their choice of what to do in a particular situation validated what I've always known to be true. And even people like myself who live it and breathe it and all of that, we can use a little validation ourselves because mm-hmm. we get assaulted constantly with, the, oh, this is all touchy-feely baloney and it doesn't really matter. So to have others validated every so often gives me a little boost once in a Absolutely. while. Absolutely. So, you know, it's nice to hear from Chris too. So hold on. You have my book. Okay. So I have now two books on Amazon, just so I can let you all know. The first one in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of men, great emotional, fabulous stories about men from men. And the next one is in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of twins, which is just the stories are amazing. I, I could not stop interviewing twins or members of twins. There's like 40 stories in there because they're just incredible. And they're both on Amazon and Kindle and, and paperbacks. Please tell me what you think. And the next one I'm doing is about millennials. So my ears were perked. <laughs> so next book is in just one afternoon, listening to the hearts of millennials. So if you know anyone in the millennial years, please reach out to me. I have some, but I would love to have more. And they don't, don't, don't filter what they do. It doesn't matter. As long as they're millennials, I'll find the story. And if they do have an interesting, interesting story, uh, great. Let me know. But if you just know a millennial, let me know that too. So Kate, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here today. And it was a lovely conversation. I loved every minute of it. I I love coming on your show and being able to come on here and talk about leading morale was uh, was extra special for me today too. Good, thank you. So everyone, don't forget to go visit Kate on Twitter. 
And at Kate Nasser, People Skills Coach, you will find her. She does some really cool things and you'll see her there. And her book again is on Amazon and Chris is working for me and I love her. So anyway, with that, <laughs> I love you all. And thank you, Amnon, too. And we'll see you next week. Bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.